praise and worship on. We want everybody, those that's here and out there in, uh, what's that, um, the, the land of, whatever that is, internet, internet. to see it. Amen. Need y'all to step over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we going. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. I tell you, can't nobody oh, do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Well, now he picked me up and he turned me around. Yes, he picked me up and he turned me around. Picked me up and he turned me around. He's my friend. That's why now can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me, do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and on his wings you shall trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand to right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your habitation, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, you shall trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And now did God cover the service with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And give us your Holy Spirit that we may lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We'd like you to turn your hymnal to page number 147. 147. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Tell me what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious. But the blood of Jesus For my cleansing This I plead Nothing but the blood of Jesus Singing, oh, precious Is that Lord that makes me whiter than This is all my hope and peace. 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing it, oh, precious. It's the blood of Jesus. Why the and the Samonic hymn, and then I'll come back with the message. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord God, in this hour, we just thank you for breath today. Yes. We thank you for waking us up on this glorious morning, oh God. We thank you for keeping us, oh Lord, even through the midst of our sins, oh God, through the midst of our struggles throughout the week. Lord God, we thank you for giving us strength, oh God, yes. to even carry out your word, oh God, to be here, oh God, through all of the things that we have been through, oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you in this hour to open up the hearts and the minds, oh God, in our souls, oh God, to hear your word, Lord God, to hear what you're saying for each and every one of us in our situations, oh God. Heavenly Father, in this hour, we ask you, oh Lord, to drive back every demonic distraction in this hour in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Any doubt or disbelief, oh God, we ask you to put a hedge of protection around us in our thoughts and our hearts, oh God. Let us be anchored in you on today in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Let us be focused on brotherly love, oh God, and peace, oh God, your guidance, oh God, your Holy Spirit, that, that leads us and protects us and keeps us, oh God. So, Lord God, in this hour, we ask you to bless our pastor in the name of Jesus Christ and our first lady, oh Lord. Lord God, bless all of us, oh Lord. Keep us in your, your perfect peace. Keep us in unity, oh Lord. Let not disruption or distraction, Lord God, anything that will try to separate the body of Christ, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, but let us be happily in love with you, oh Lord, jointed by one another, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and we bond satanic retaliation, ambushment, backlash, and counterattack against each and every call, every purpose, every will and emotions on today, oh God, and we just ask you for your presence in this hour to just have your way in the program service in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Have your way, Lord. Have your way. God's good. Amen. God is good. Yeah, he's good. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. God is good. Like I should Oh, many things are not 
like they should be. But I'm grateful that he keeps being good to me. I said, God is good all the time. Trust him, he'll be good to you all the time. Oh, my father, he's good. Yeah. Let me tell 
tell it. What he's done for me. Said you won't tell it, I go tell it. What he's done for me. Set me free. 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 It's free indeed. Set me free. Church, I'm free. Set me free. I'm free indeed. Set me free. Well, the devil thought he had me. I got away. The devil thought he had me. I got away. That old devil thought he had me. I got away. The devil thought he had me. Yeah. 
and he's our access into heaven completely. He's our access to God completely and for eternity. And so what you and I ought to strive to do is not be a part of so many different other uh, little tribes or little families or uh, little organizations or groups uh, that uh, kind of try to measure our acceptance or our approval, but making sure that we're in the family of God, yes. making sure that we're in the body of Christ. Amen. That's the contact ultimately that you want to have. And so people may talk to a lot of people on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, but are you talking with God on a daily basis all the time? Are you in constant communication with God? That's the one that truly matters. And the truth be told, a lot of people may have to move away from a lot of other different communications and making sure that they're communicating totally, exclusively with God. Because that's what's going to determine everything else. And so that's what we want to work on in this part where we're winding down in our topic, A Journey of Revelation. And the subject is the Book of Life. Not just any book. This is not just anybody's phone book or address book. This is not just anybody's uh, social media, but this is the ultimate list, the ultimate role book that you and I ought to want to be a part of. This is the one where you receive the ultimate security, the ultimate safety, the ultimate guidance and instruction before anything else on this earth. And it doesn't just last a short period of time. It lasts for an eternity. So that's what we want to work on is the book of life. And in fact, it's the Lamb's book of life. Now, if somebody says a lamb having a book, that doesn't make sense. Well, when you're talking about God and when you're talking about the sacrificial lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ, it makes literally all the sense and all the importance in the world. Amen. And being in his book, being connected with him based on his status, based on what he has to offer, based on the benefits that come from him, that's something that is the ultimate favor. That's something that you want to be in constant contact with, not just a little bit of time, not just for a few minutes, not just for an hour like a conversation would be, but for an eternity. Yeah. Being a part of the book of life, that is eternal life, Amen. totally secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, if you're on his list, if you're involved with him, you've got every single thing you need and you can call on him and you can walk with him, not just now, but for eternity. And that's a security in the life of the believer. So that's what you want to be a part of. That's what you want to make sure that you're connected with. In spite of all these other connections and all these sort of plugins that the world has to offer, you want to make sure you're part of this heavenly, ultimately, eternally secure group. That's the group that you want to make sure that you're connected with. And so I'd like you to take your Bible, if you will, and turn to Revelation chapter 20, because there what you're going to see is the final judgment. And this isn't just any kind of court case. And this isn't just any kind of thing that comes up in a judicial system. This is the final judgment. And this judgment takes place after the millennial reign after Satan has been loose for a little while and he tried to gather up some things against uh, God and the people of God to go to Jerusalem to confront the Lord Jesus Christ, well, he's going to get wiped out in just a moment. And we looked at that last week. In just a split second, at the wave of a hand, Jesus Christ is going to wipe him and all his other ones that followed him right on out and he's going to be cast uh, into the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. Him the Antichrist and the false prophet and all those that choose to follow uh, will have that same thing happen. Uh, but before that, what's going to take place is what's called the Great White Throne Judgment. That's the final judgment. And this judgment is going to be for all of those who have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. They're going to get their final verdict, their final sentence, which is going to be the same for each and every single one of them. It's going to be the same for Satan, for the Antichrist, for the false prophet, all the fallen angels, and everybody that chose to join that confederacy is going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And so I'd like you to take your Bible and look at verse 11 in chapter 20, and you're going to see something that's not fiction. 
This is not part of some movie. This is not something that somebody came up with. But this is an event that's going to take place. This is something that's going to happen to the ungodly. And anybody who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. This is somebody, listen, this is for anybody who rejects God's offer of being a part of his kingdom through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the final sentence. There's no compromise. There's no place you go where you sort it out and work it all out. There's no probation period. This is absolutely it. And so look at verse 11 and look at what the Bible says. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. So there's no place of correction. There's no place of getting it together. There's no other chance. Uh, you had the opportunity to accept or reject it. If you reject it, of course, that's what's going to make you stand here at this, this throne because you rejected Jesus. And so it says there's no place for them at all. And verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small, and great, stand before God. And it says the books were open. What that is is books that contain every single person and every single deed that every single person has ever done. All of things that took place over the course of a person's life, everything that happened, whether it's good work or whether it's bad works, is in these books. But the problem is, uh, being that these are standing here without coverage, without the Lord Jesus Christ, then that means everything in their life is totally unacceptable. And every bad thing they've done, there's no coverage. And every good thing they've done, it's simply just not enough. Amen. And so they have to give an account for what it is that's in these books. Mm -hmm. And it makes it clear, another book was open which is the book of life. Yeah. Now that book of life, it's not just deeds, it's not just things that were done or undone or whatever, it's the names of everybody that through the Lord Jesus Christ is acceptable to God. Amen. Every single person that has been redeemed, every single person that has been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, every person that has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, every person that has been sealed, until the day of redemption, every single person that's in the kingdom of God is found within this contact list. Amen. Every single person that knows God by knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and who has salvation in their life is in this book of life. This isn't a book of their deeds in life and their lives and all the good achievements that they made and all the big names that they had and all the money that they made and the places that they live and all the places that they traveled all the good life that they live. What this is is the book of eternal life, meaning every single person that has eternal life. And the only way for them to get eternal life is going to be through Christ. Knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and having their sins covered and having the sin debt paid for them based on their repentance and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's whose names are written here. So therefore, there's no question. There's no controversy as to who's here and who's not. Only the redeemed are listed here. And so it says, the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things. So if the books are open, here's all your deeds, all the things you've done, the good, the achievements, wasn't enough. The bad, of course, is unrighteous, unholy. It's not enough. You don't have anything to cover that. At the same time, your name is not written in the book of life. And so any person, no matter what height, no matter what weight, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what race, no matter what age is going to be standing here and they're going to be have this and they're going to have to give an account for whether or not they are in his books or not and how they measure up. And so if they're standing at this great white throne, obviously they have not measured up. And they have not measured up because they don't know the very thing that could cause them to measure up, the very one that could cover them, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So therefore, of course, their names are not written in this book of life, and at the same time, they have to give an account for what's in the books. And there's not enough, and so they're short. 
And what that does is that causes an eternal separation away from God. It says, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, we know that nobody is saved by works. We're saved by faith, by grace, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's how you get saved. Yeah. And so all those good works, even if it's thousands of them, it's still not enough to convince God to give you eternal life. Yeah. All the bad things that were done, there's no coverage for it. And there's no thing where it's going to be a scale where the good is going to get weighed with the bad. And okay, you did a lot of good. You did this much bad. You can come on in. There has to be an absolute coverage and relationship and justification with the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be accepted. Yeah. By this time, everybody who's going to come into the kingdom is already written. Yeah. There's nothing anybody can do. There's no community service. There's no public charity that anybody can do at this time to gain salvation. By this time, it's too late. Amen. If your name is not written in this book of life, eternal life through Christ, there's going to be an absolute separation. It says in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged. Judged how? According to these books based on their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, if their name is not written in this book, ultimately, there's separation. It says, and death and hell, verse 14, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And verse 15 says, and whosoever, that means anybody, and everybody at this point, was not found written in the book of life was given all kinds of chances. That's not what the Bible says. It says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, which is somewhere where nobody really truly wants to go. But yet it's the reality of all of those who reject the offer and plan of salvation by God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you and I look at this now, and what we have to notice is the very importance of knowing that our names are written where? In the Lamb's Book of Life. There's gonna be the temptation to try to get acceptance otherwise, and through a lot of other different groups and organizations, but none of it is as important as your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now somebody says, now that's a small thing. I know if I'm saved, my name is written there. Well, when you start going through certain periods of tribulation and pressure, and persecution, and then when you get tempted to get built up in pride, will you remember that your name are being written in the Lamb's Book of Life is the most important thing. When you get rejection, listen, when you get bullying, when you get things coming up against you, will you remember where your name is? When you get tempted to do all kinds of achievements and accomplishments to get yourself recognized and credit, will you remember that the most important thing is that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's, right. That's what brings your favor. That's what brings true acceptance. That's what brings recognition in spite of anything else that goes on in your life. No matter what doesn't take place in your life, no matter what level of disappointment or delays or setbacks or what doesn't happen, what promise doesn't seem like it's coming to pass, what ultimately matters is that what? Your name is secure in God. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And that ultimately what you have is a secure position in the book of life. That's eternal security and that's the benefit that every single believer has in Christ is that you can talk with God, uh, you can pray to God, uh, everything's going to work out uh, for, the God's, for God's glory and for favor in your life based on the fact that you've got this ultimate contact that's never going to be deleted. You've got eternal security where nobody can ever separate you. That's of the utmost importance. And Jesus wants to make that clear right now, just like he wanted to make it clear back then even to uh, his disciples. Take your Bible. I want you to see uh, the very importance of that. Go to Luke chapter 10. And I want you to see what Jesus says and how he stresses something that's very, very important. Because even in your walk with the Lord, even in your witnessing, your ministry, uh, you're evangelizing, and in your daily walk, 
you're going to get tempted to get puffed up with pride. And so uh, there are those, of course, who will be faithful, and uh, they'll do their ministry for the Lord, and they'll be effective, and they'll be fruitful for the Lord, and that's all a great thing. But you got to watch out for self-righteousness. you got to watch out for the strong thirst and desire to get recognition. you got to watch out for thinking that somehow is uh, in addition to God's grace, the work of your hands, and what it is that you do and what it is that you put together is very easy to get a mindset just like Lucifer had of pride and think that it's by your hands and by your work that certain things are working out and certain things are going to be kept. Satan just sits back and waits for the spiritual cockiness to settle inside of your heart before he's coming in. And so humility is of the utmost importance all the time. Jesus said what? The meek shall inherit the earth. That is the ones that are balanced and under control. Amen. Having your strength under control. Not necessarily controlling others, but making sure you have what? Self-control. Not being too passive, not being too aggressive, but making sure that you've got your spirit uh, and your flesh under control. Amen. That's a vessel that Satan can't deal with. But something that's pumped up and puffed up in pride, uh, taking glory upon itself, doing things its own way, being independent of God, going aside from the Spirit of God, is a vessel that Satan can work with. That's something that he can bring down because pride goes before a fall. And of course, Jesus knows this. He's the one that represents and displays the ultimate meekness. And those that would be learners have to learn about his character and learn who he is and not forget who they are in him. Keep this in mind all the time. Never forget who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You might be in several circles, in certain organizations, yeah. in certain groups, but all of those things are weak when it comes down to the kingdom of God. Amen. Being in the body of Christ is the most important thing. Any group, listen, any organization, anything that you're a part of, any program, that attempts to set itself up independent of the kingdom of God will qualify as something that really is a separate kingdom based on a false foundation. It's something that will be very weak and it really won't bring about the blessings that God can give you in the kingdom. So be careful that you don't drift over into your own self-worth, your own self-righteousness, and your own way of doing things. Amen. Making sure that totally you're anchored in the Lord, remembering that even when success happens, and even when certain things start to flow, favor and fruit and uh, gifts and favor in your life, making sure that you know and remember uh, who God is and what your position ultimately is in the Lord Jesus Christ. So look at Luke chapter 10, and I want you to look at verse 17. And uh, what you have is Jesus, of course, who had just uh, commissioned 70, Call 70 disciples, that is those that would uh, eventually, of course, go out by uh, Jesus' commission and witness and evangelize. And uh, Jesus gave them some clear instructions as to what they were supposed to do and what they were not to do. And this was to make sure that they did the work of the Lord effectively. And so Jesus, of course, uh, gave them these instructions that, that he knows what's going to be effective and also he knows that they still have this flesh. Uh, yes, he's empowering them, but there's the tendency of human nature to drift away from the leading and the guidance of the spirit Amen. and to desire its own thing. We've got these senses and uh, we have Satan that's operative, demons entice and tempt. And so that combination can cause disruption and destruction where your work is concerned. In fact, when you get somebody who's attempting to do the work of the Lord or trying to do the work of the Lord or claiming to do the work of the Lord, but yet they're in self, you're going to have somebody that's going to be very dangerous. And so that can be disruptive and destructive, not just to them, but to others as well. They'll be misguided themselves and they'll misrepresent Jesus, misrepresent the kingdom and cause a lot of problems in the lives and the hearts of other people. And so up front, on the front end, Jesus knows this. So before he sends them out, he makes sure that they know how to get things done. Make sure that they operate in the proper balance that they have to operate and have the mindset that they have to do 
uh, that they have to have in order to do the work of the Lord. And so Jesus clearly gives them some instructions uh, from verse 1 all the way down uh, through uh, verse uh, 11. He gives them uh, what to do and he, he encourages them because discouragement may come as well. And so he shows them a list of just what's going to be a good thing as a package for them to be effective where their work is concerned. But now look at verse 17. And what you're going to see is the return of the 70. And so keep in mind that the mindset is of the utmost importance while you're doing the work of the Lord. And this is not just for these back here, but it's for anybody that is a learner, a disciple, a student of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right here and right now, especially while we're in these end times, while we're in these last days and making sure you don't get caught up in self. That's a very subtle attack that Satan brings your way is, uh, which is the other extreme of just unfruitfulness, not doing anything at all. And so you've got those who are very uh, futile, who are not bearing fruit for the Lord whatsoever. And then you've got those who, yes, are bearing fruit and doing certain things. And there's a temptation there at the same time to get away from the Lord. And so look at what uh, Jesus says. <clears throat> Look what the Bible says in verse 17. It says, and the 70, this is after they've been commissioned, after they've gone out, returned again with joy, saying, <clears throat> Lord, even the devils or the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And so, yes, uh, they confess that it's through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that these devils that they're dealing with in these people are subject. And so remember that these demons are necessarily subject to them, but they're subject to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Because of the fullness of the name of Jesus and all that it carries with it and the authority of Jesus' name and the believer accompanied with that and believing of that has power. Mm -hmm. And so the person has no power necessarily in of their self. It's energized by the Spirit of God Amen. and by the name of Jesus. And so they confess that, and they have joy, and they confess the lordship and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so somebody might say, well, that's fine. But at top priority in their minds, they had the fact that these demons were subject as the forefront of their thinking. And so look at what Jesus says in verse 18. He says, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan, that is Lucifer himself, as lightning fall from heaven. That is, you're talking about these demons and things that subject. You got this joy and everything. But I saw Lucifer uh, get kicked out of heaven like lightning. And um, he goes on to say, behold, I give you, that is what you've got, it's coming from me. Make sure you remember that. I give unto you power or authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means, listen, he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so he wants them to make sure they know where their source is. That's right. Their power source yes. is coming from the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I give you the power over these demons Amen. and to tread upon them. Keeping in mind that I saw Lucifer himself, the epitome of evil, and all enticement and temptation, seduction and allurement, fall from heaven based on his pride. That's what was under me. That's what I saw, and I'm the one that's giving you this power and giving you this authority. Jesus makes this clear because he doesn't want them to drift off into a mindset that thinking it's just them. Amen. And it's about any authority or anything they have within themselves and get their mind away from their true power source in the Lord Jesus Christ and they can somehow, just like making magic, they can do it in and of their own will yeah, and of their own authority. So with that, Jesus, kept, listen, he canceled that by saying this in verse 20. He says, notwithstanding, he says, in this rejoice not, not so much that you've got uh, this authority over demons, something else, has got to be your ultimate mindset and your top priority. He says that the spirits are subject unto you. He says, but rather rejoice 
because your names are written in heaven. And there's no translation that says that your names are written in the book of life. That is rejoice of the utmost priority. Top priority. That what? Your position in Christ is secure. That's the rejoicing that the believer has. Yes, part of that package is authority over demons. Part of that package is the ability to cast out devils, uh, to be delivered, to by God's authority and by his will deliver others. But the most important thing that will humble you continually is to realize that your ultimate dependence is upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That ultimately is by his grace that you're saved. Amen. Not by anything that you've done. Not by anything that you're going to do. Not based on Satan being under your feet and all those things. It's all about Christ. Yeah. Not getting puffed up in pride. And that's what Jesus wants to make clear to them. Go to Philippians chapter 4. And look at what the Apostle Paul says. Because Paul, as well, wants to give encouragement to these believers who have really helped him out in a time of need. And so, these believers in the church of Philippi have been persevering. They've been pressing on. They've been extremely benevolent, particularly to Paul and his ministry. And so, uh, Paul wanted to make sure that they were encouraged. He wanted to make sure he built them up in the Lord and made sure that they knew, of course, who they were in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, just like Jesus wanted to make sure that they didn't drift off into getting puffed up by their works. Because it's real easy to do that. And so uh, you find where the Apostle Paul gives the church at Philippi quite a bit of instruction and encouragement where keeping on with the Lord is concerned. And uh, it's very famous in chapter 4 to see the scripture where the Apostle Paul tells them, uh, and he makes it clear to them, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, yeah. which is the core and the essence of every single thing that the believer does. And notice what he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is not by my own strength, it's done by the grace of God and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So look at Philippians and look at chapter 4. And the Apostle Paul is driving home to them of a surety to rejoice in the Lord. That is, make sure that what? Your rejoicing continually is in the Lord. That is, in who God is, his protection, his security, and his provision. Because it's very easy to attempt to find ulterior uh, provision systems and security systems and find your hope in something else other than God. And so he's encouraging them to rejoice in the Lord, especially in the times that we're living in and with so many opportunities to accept other things as being equal uh, with God. And so look at verse 1 in chapter 4, look what the Apostle Paul says. He says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, he's showing them how cared for they are. And that's one of the ultimate ways of showing uh, encouragement to somebody is to let them know how uh, valuable they are Amen. and how loved they are, how cared for they are and how much God loved them. And then having that confirmation in somebody else in a Christ like person. Yes, a person may understand that God loved them, but right now they just don't feel it. Right now, it seems like they can't see God, can't hear God. But yet, if there's a contact point with somebody who got the love of the Lord inside of them, Amen. giving them encouragement, that can be a very uplifting moment in their life. Amen. And so the Apostle Paul stresses how dearly beloved and longed for they are. Look at what he says. He says, my joy and crown. So, stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. That is, make sure you persevere in the Lord. You're loved by God. You're loved by me. He encourages them to do what? Persevere and endure in the things of God. He says in verse 2, I beseech Eodius and I beseech Sentis that they, watch this, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. These are those who gave assistance and help and things like that. And look at what he says in verse 3. He says, Now entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, Help those women which labored with me in the gospel. And so these are those who uh, were extremely helpful to the Apostle Paul in his 
uh, missionary journeys and in his work, his evangelism and uh, his apostleship that he did for the work of the Lord. These are those that were helpful to him Amen. and uh, gave quite a bit of encouragement. And so he's given them encouragement, of course, because he knows the tendency to get discouraged. And so he says, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers. And look at what he's telling them. He says, whose names are in the book of life. Uh -huh. And notice he doesn't give a whole lot of attention to their works. He doesn't do a lot of calling out of what it is that they've done. He doesn't run a whole long list down of things to give them recognition and all that stuff because if the truth be told, those things kind of run out. Amen. If a person gets puffed up with all those things at one point, they're going to constantly need that fuel over and over and over again. Yes. And so what Paul does is, listen, he tells them the one thing, the main thing, the common thread that can run through each and every single one of them. Uh -huh. And what that does is that keeps them on one accord. Having the same mindset. That way it's not one that says I've done this, another one says I've done this, and I've done a little bit more than him. I've done a whole lot more than her. This is where I ought to be. This is what I ought to be getting because uh, these are all the things I've put into it. This is all the investments that I've made. I did a whole lot more than all of them, and now you've got this division. And so Paul very wisely and very lovingly runs a cord through every single one of them. Regardless of all the things that they put together, all the things that they've done, uh, it's not one that was a little more help than the other one. It's not one that was a little more assistance than the other one. Look at what he shows them. He says, listen, my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. <clears throat> and so, if all of them have done anything, they've done it by the grace of God. Amen. They've done it by the power of God, and that's where the glory ought to go to. Yes. Listen, the most important thing is that they're saved. And that they're doing the things that they're doing because of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So it's not by their own merit. It's not by their own strength. It's not by pride. It's by what? Their name being written in the book of life. How did they get to that point? Based on their faith in Jesus Christ. Based on his grace. Based on the indwelling and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Based on the forgiveness of sins, no matter how much or how little, they all have got forgiveness of sins, so they all are on the same playing field. Uh -huh. They all are together, and what have they got? They've got a part in that ultimate, secure, eternal contact list, that address book that's permanent in heaven. Amen. So there's not one that can say, I'm bigger than the other one. I'm better than the other one and get puffed up with pride and cause all kinds of problems. Yeah. All of them names are written in the book of life. And that's what the Apostle Paul points out. They've been benevolent, they've been helpful, they've been gracious, and they're secure based on the Lord Jesus Christ and their position in him. And he goes on to give them some instructions that have to remain, of course, throughout the work that they do and throughout the rest of their lives. The instructions that he gives them is the same instructions that you and I ought to have right now. Listen, rejoicing in the Lord, our position in the Lord, being standfast, and uh, persevering and enduring by the power of the Holy Spirit, being obedient to God, living our lives in faith uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and carrying out this fruit in our lives based on our position with the Lord. And so in verse 4, he says, Rejoice uh, in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. That means a permanent, perpetual rejoicing in your heart no matter what the situation no matter what the circumstance, no matter what takes place, no matter what doesn't take place. The Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. That is a constant reminder and encouragement and instruction and strong admonition to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Not in your accomplishments, not in what happens, not so much in all kinds of blessings, but rejoicing in the Lord and who you are in Christ. That's the most important thing. He goes on to say, let your moderation be made known unto all men. That word moderation in the original text means balance, just like meekness, making sure that what you're putting on display is not this religious front of self-righteousness, but making sure you're showing the meekness of Christ. And so the presence, listen, the presence of the Holy Ghost in your life is going to show a vessel that's under control. What is it that people really need to see? To really testify of the work that the Lord Jesus Christ is doing in your life. A vessel that's completely submitted to the work and calling of God. Yes. 
one that is under control, not wound up and all over the place doing his own thing and seeking recognition. One that really is truly under auspice of the Holy Ghost, controlled by the Holy Ghost, and showing the meekness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul says. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. He says the Lord is at hand. That is, the day of the Lord is at hand. That is the ultimate time of God's uh, judgment is coming soon and very soon. And because of that, you don't want to get caught sleeping. You don't want to get caught not being sober. You don't want to get caught off your game and not doing the work that God called you to do. You want to be caught unfruitful. You want to make sure you have that balance inside of your life due to the fact that the judgment of God is at hand. And in verse 6, he gives the admonition to say, be careful for nothing. That is, don't be overly anxious and doubting God. That is, don't go to the other extreme. Uh, don't be so pumped up and wound up that you forget all about God and get all into yourself. And at the same time, don't allow yourself to be overly burdened to the point where you start to doubt God and uh, you doubt what it is that God can do and uh, you're not being faithful and you're just doubting his promises. He says, be careful that is overly anxious for nothing. Amen. He says, but in everything, watch this, he shows just what to do, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And this is what's going to happen in verse 7. He says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so that's how the believer is kept, rejoicing in the Lord, knowing who he or she is in Christ, uh, making sure that you're a moderate vessel, uh, being very temperate, and uh, being meek, and making sure that you don't allow yourself to get overburdened and doubting God, but that your prayers and your supplications with thanksgiving is directed totally to God, and that peace with God, and that peace of God, he says, will guard your hearts and minds uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. And that's the safest place for any person to be. And that's the safest contact point to have because that shows the ultimate, a uh, supreme fellowship in the life of the believer. Uh -huh. Not disconnected from our God, but being in the family of God, experiencing the full benefits of God exclusively. Now in closing, I'd like you to take your Bible and go to Daniel chapter 12. And I want you to look at what he says because he gives a prophecy that shoots all the way until the very end before the new heaven and new earth. And so Daniel, during times of unfamiliarity and during times of a lot of stress and the temptation to compromise, had to stand on the word of God. In fact, he made that up in his mind from the very beginning. As soon as he was deported from Jerusalem into Babylon, that he was going to stay focused on the Lord and do what thus saith the Lord regardless of anything else. Even to the point of not accepting and eating the king's meat, but making sure that he stayed focused on what it is that God was doing and being empowered by the Spirit of God. And so uh, Daniel was a man who clearly, obviously, was dedicated and wholeheartedly devoted to the will of God. And because of that, he was empowered by God to do some very great things, even in the midst of uh, a lot of opposition going on around him. And so uh, if you go to chapter 12, what you'll see is by this time, of course, Daniel is a very elderly man, and he's walked with God for quite some time, and um, that doesn't do anything with the fact that he's able to hear from God, and he's able to get the vision from God and stand on the word of God completely. And what it is that he sees because he's human upsets him, and um, it causes a degree of distress and things like that, but yet he gets encouraged by the angel of God. And so the same way that God put his word on inside of him is the same way that God will encourage him. Uh, his flesh, yes, may get weak and overwhelmed, but it's God's spirit that keeps you going. Amen. And the vision and the promises of God is the one thing that really truly can keep anything going, anybody going through any age and any time and any circumstance, through any dispensation. And so uh, he receives a vision that goes all the way until uh, what we're dealing with in Revelation, which goes all the way into the very end of time. And this is a promise and this is a hope that every single believer has to hold on to through any age. And so although Daniel is getting his way back here, 
it definitely stretches and applies through uh, the remainder of this time and all the way through the age of grace, Amen. all the way through the church age and all the way through the tribulation period and all the way down through the millennium and all the way to the very end before the new heaven and new earth. And so look at what the Bible says. Daniel chapter 12, and he's talking about the time of the end. And so Daniel gets a prophecy about the very end of time. And the reason why he was so overwhelmed is because uh, what he saw encapsulated not only where he was, and not only what was going to take place where the Jews was concerned, but all the way to the time of Jacob's trouble, all the way to the time of the final wrath and the tribulation period, which contained the Antichrist, and the false prophet and that wicked administration and all the things that Satan would do during that time. And so there's the encouragement that God gives to Daniel to remain faithful. There's the encouragement that Daniel gives to his people to remain faithful. And there's the ultimate encouragement from the word of God for any believer to remain faithful. And also for anybody who doesn't know the Lord to get right. Amen. And make sure you get it together and yeah. stop drifting off into idolatry and doing things aside from God and making sure that the, you know that the most important thing is for you to be right with God. Amen. And for believers to know that your being right with God is the thing that ultimately secures you no matter what kind of tribulation takes place around you. You don't have to fear the things that's coming upon the world. You don't have to fear the wrath that God is pouring out upon the ungodly. You'll be kept. Uh, you'll be sustained. You'll be secure based on your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll say that a thousand times over and over again if I have to because there are a lot of different security systems that try to rise up in your life. Satan presents a package of all kinds of ulterior things that seem like it's comfortable, that seem like it's stable, that seem as though it's beneficial, but really it's not. You would get a level of status with being with this, being a part of this certain thing, but really, the most important thing is being with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so look at what the Bible says in chapter 12 of Daniel and verse 1. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. That's the tribulation period. That's what he's looking at now. Which, watch this, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. That's a promise. Every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? At the book of life. Amen. Everybody whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life shall be what? Shall be secure, shall be stable, and shall be delivered. Uh -huh. So no matter what trouble comes upon the earth, during that time, those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be what? Will be secure. For just that time, not just that time, but for eternity, Amen. they'll be totally secure. And so he says, uh, these, they will be delivered, everyone that shall be written, found written in the book. Verse 2, and many of them, watch this, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall be awake. And so as they don't stay dead, they will be uh, resurrected again. But now, there's two different groups of those that will be resurrected. Amen. So there's no doubt there'll be a resurrection, but the question is where you headed after you get resurrected. Amen. And so he says, many of them shall sleep in the dust of the earth, that is, they've died. Yeah. He says, shall awake. But look at what he says next. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That is a total separation away from God. And where is that going to be? That's going to be at the great white throne judgment that we saw in Revelation chapter 20. And so Daniel receives a vision and a promise that goes all the way to the great white throne at the end of the millennium. This is a promise that's in his mind. And this is the promise that's to go in the minds of all those that read this, his people, and every single other person <clears throat> that would partake uh, of this word. It says, and they that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars, watch this, forever and ever. Amen. That's the security of those that know the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he caps it off by saying in verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, and the, the Spirit of God, this angel, is giving Daniel this encouragement because at this time he's very overwhelmed by all the things that he's seen. And there's no wonder because encapsulated in this vision is a whole lot of things that would take place throughout the ages, throughout the time, leading all the way up until the great white throne. He gets it in one time, right here and right now. So not only is he in this uh, unfamiliar place where he's had to stand all this time, but he's getting this vision from God about what's going to happen ultimately in the future. Certain good things ultimately, but then there's some bad things at the same time. But more importantly, the joy that every single true believer is going to have. And so with that, Daniel gets the ultimate encouragement in verse 4. He says, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end, that is the prophecy that he receives. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on one side of the bank and the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which is upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth, watch this, that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time and times and a half, and when he shall have accomplished the scatter, the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now what that's got to do with is the Antichrist and that administration that he has, and all the way up into the setting up of the abomination of the desolation, and then that totally collapsing. And so you see where he's seeing all the way into the tribulation period. He says, and I heard, but I understood not. Uh -huh. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. Watch that. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. And that, of course, is a promise. We saw that as far as the um, second part of the tribulation period, which is known as the great tribulation period, which has a time that it starts and a time that it ends. That's the hope of everybody that's going to be born during that time for them to see and know that Jesus, the true king, is coming back to establish the one true kingdom here on earth. Amen. It says, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So look at what he tells Daniel in verse 13, which is the same thing that you and I need to know right here and right now with all that information that we've got. But go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. That's a promise that goes to Daniel. That's a promise that you and I have got right now. And that's a surety that you and I, if we're born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, are totally secure because he is our ultimate hope. He is our ultimate promise and our ultimate, sure, absolute desire. Is for our names to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. 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 I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow, to follow Jesus. I have decided. No turn. 
turning back. No turning back. Oh no. No turning back. I have decided. I have decided that I'm gonna follow. follow Jesus. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. You may be certain about other things, but do you know where your soul is anchored? Mm -hmm. Do you have coverage where your heart is concerned? Yeah. Where your eternal life is concerned? Well, it's something if you've never thought about it, you need to think about it today. And you need to also know that there's security for it if you'll just accept it. There's coverage for your sins if you'll just receive it. Yes, yes. That's not something you can buy it's not something you can work for. It's something that's already done and paid for uh -huh. by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. But in order to receive it, you're going to have to change your mind, uh -huh. change your heart. You have to repent, turn from sin, and realize that Jesus Christ is the only one that can give you the coverage that's needed. Yes. Give your life to him today. You don't have time. Uh -huh. It all belongs to him. You're not guaranteed the rest of this day. So you need to give your life to Jesus right here and right now. Amen. I'm not trying to shame you into it. I just want to show you the benefit that you'll have. You know what you'll get? Eternal life. Absolute. Eternal life forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Will you receive him in your life today? Maybe God's been talking to you about it. You've heard it over and over again. We need to make a decision firmly right here and right now while you still got time. They are those who rejected an invitation just like this. And right now they're in eternal torment, eternal death, separated from God, and can't respond. But you have the opportunity today to respond because your spirit, soul, and body are still intact. They're still together. You're walking around. You're living and you're breathing. Amen. But yet, if you don't know Jesus, you could be living walking dead. Sure. You need to be made alive. And the only way to be made alive is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him in your life today. Admit that you need your sins covered and that you want the greatest life that you can ever possibly get by having right relationship with God and having peace with him. Receive him in your life today. Or maybe you've drifted away. You've gotten away from the Lord. You know the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, you know better. But you've gone in many different other directions seeking intimacy. Seeking wholeness, seeking completion. You're not going to find it aside from Christ. Amen. You need to get right back in good fellowship with the Lord again. Don't try out a lot of different things. You need to come back to your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That intimate time that you once had with him. And go according to his time frame, according to his calendar. Stop trying to work it out your way. Maybe you come to the end of yourself now. To that journey that you took, that trip that you were on, aside from the road that you were on before. Get back on track now. Get your relationship, your fellowship right back with Jesus again. I want to pray for you if that's you. Father, I just want to come in Jesus' name and I want to thank you for this opportunity we have today, Lord. I just ask that you would draw people into your kingdom by way of the cross. And Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for forgiveness of sins. And I'm just asking, dear Father, that you would draw people to the cross. I ask, Lord, that people would be revived, healed, and set free, and be delivered, and experience eternal life in the gift of your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that that fire would be rekindled again. I ask, dear Father, that people would be put back in right fellowship with you and do what it takes, Lord, to bring them to the end of themselves, where nothing else matters but you. I pray that you would continue to remind them, Lord, about the time when they walked with you, when they first got saved. I pray, Lord, that you would draw them back, Lord, in that secret time, that secret place with you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. If any of that was anybody here, I want to talk to you after service. I want to see just what's on your mind Amen. and see what it is that um, God has been working on your heart about. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, very briefly, we're going to go into our communion and we're going to partake of the table together. <coughs> but we want to make sure that our hearts are clear before the Lord, so we're going to do a self-examination, not examining somebody else, but making sure that you're looking inwardly, that there's nothing ungodly in your life before you partake of this table that the Lord commanded us to do until he returns. This isn't just any kind of table, this isn't anything that you would do in a restaurant, but this is something that commemorates the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It reminds us of his blood that was shed on Calvary for us, for our sins. And it also anticipates <coughs> his return and uh, what it is that we're supposed to be doing uh, in light of his return in our belief system Amen. and how we're supposed to operate together on one accord. So when you partake of this table, make sure you do it worthily. I'm going to make sure everybody has an opportunity to do that at this time privately. Uh, to make sure anything in your life gets confessed, whether it's known or unknown before the Lord. So at this time, before we partake of the table, I'm going to ask you to pray silently uh, to the Lord. You don't have to confess it to me, you don't have to confess it to anybody else, but what you do have to do is make sure <coughs> that you confess it to God and um, uh, have your sins purged before you partake of the bread and the cup. Amen. So let's go to the Lord. If anything, uh, we need to confess anything comes to your mind, or anything that you don't know, not aware of, the Holy Spirit will bring it to your attention, and just confess and agree with God about it, that it needs to get handled, it needs to get dealt with, and that the Lord is the only one that can cleanse it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all the things that you've done for us. We thank you for the power and the authority that you have to cleanse us of our sins and set us right again. Lord, we want to partake of this table worthily. Lord, we want to make sure that um, we have a mindset to really be in union with you, communion with you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. And we just ask now, Lord, that as we partake, Lord, that we will feel your glorious presence and anticipate your soon return. In Jesus' name, my brother. Amen. 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 represents the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're going to partake all together because in union we all come together based on our belief of what it is that Jesus Christ accomplished for us at Calvary. And it shows and anticipates his soon return. Deacon Hawkins is going to hold the tray and you'll be guided around. We're going to ask that you hold it, take it back to your seat, and then we'll eat all together. Burdens of my heart 
they roll away. But it was then by faith that I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Was, was it for a crime that I have done? He They roll all the way. It was then by faith that I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. You were but a drop of grief. Can never repay the day. Savior Jesus Christ, that was shed for the remission of sin. Drink you all. Dear Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the privilege to be able to partake of this communion in the Lord's Supper. We thank you for the unity in the body of Christ. We thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you want to do. The most important thing, Lord, is forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for the shed blood on Calvary. We thank you that victory was won on the cross. And we thank you that the indwelling the life of your precious son, Jesus Christ, shines through us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the mind of Christ and teaching us humility and teaching us meekness. We thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We thank you that we're right with you, Lord, and we've escaped the bondages of the world. 
We thank you that we don't have to live and serve sin anymore, but we can serve you to the fullest. We thank you, dear Lord, for the liberty that we have through Christ Jesus and that we're free to serve you. We thank you, Lord, for the Great Commission and for the things you called us to do. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that flow through us and benefit one another and benefit your body and benefit your work. We thank you, Lord, that you keep us and you help us to persevere. You help us to endure. You teach us how to love. You give us wisdom. You give us spiritual understanding. You give us knowledge. And we thank you for the knowledge of the truth that makes us free, just like Jesus said. There's no other friend we have closer than the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I ask, Lord, that you would help us to show forth the positive spirit to others, to let our light shine in the midst of this evil, wicked world. We want to be salt for the earth, dear Lord. We want to make sure that we witness for you effectively. Yes. We want people to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We want them to be healed, saved, set free, and delivered. Yes. It's not about us, dear Lord. We're not walking in self-righteousness. We don't desire our own recognition. But Lord, we desire for your kingdom to be uplifted, the name of Jesus to be uplifted. Lord, we want you to be glorified in everything that we do oh, yeah. and everything that we say. Bond us together in a spirit of unity. Yeah. In this church, Father, it's about you. It belongs to you. And so we ask, the Lord, that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Order our steps, dear Father. Teach us. Show us what we have to do to be better disciples for you. We pray that we be wise stewardship over the things that you've blessed us with. We ask for your guidance and your protection, dear Father. Give us the green light to everybody that needs to be witness to, everybody that needs hope, and everybody that's about to fall off, people that might be desiring to take their lives, or people who are overwhelmed with depression. Help us, dear Lord, to with our testimony to you, with our uh, witness for you, to really be a strong encouragement for them. Father, we want to make sure that we know what you call us to do. Father, we want to be fruitful. We don't want to be found unfruitful. Yes. Lord, we want to make sure that we're absolutely always doing the things that we have to do for you. Every chance, every opportunity that we get, Father, we want to take what we've partaken of, what is on the inside of us, and share it with somebody else. This world is dying. There are people who are losing hope, Father, and they need to know about the ultimate hope that's found in Christ. Yes. So, Father, we ask that you would show us the way. And we pray, Father, that you forgive us of our sins. Yes. Everything that we've done that we may not necessarily have known was offense and things that we do know. Help us through. And also, dear Lord, remove anything that's not like you that would clog up the flow of your Holy Spirit in yes. our lives to others. Anything that would block our service for you. Anything, Lord, that would hinder you from getting the glory, yeah. I pray that you remove it in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you and praise you, you. and glorify you, Father. And bless every single one that's here today. Yeah. I pray, Lord, that you would bless their homes, bless yeah. their families. And I yes. pray, Lord, that you would bless their witness and their walk, yeah. their vocations, whether it be spiritually or whether it be physically. Yeah. I pray that you be glorified in our lives. Yeah. Cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for your gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand for the benediction, and then deacons will take charge. Now may the God of all comfort and grace establish your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore, until we meet again. Until we meet in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.